So recently I was given some boards to play with. Uh, these are little logic gates. And me being a firmware developer, I won't be able to comment on the electrical or that kind of components, but um, I can give you my thoughts and just playing with them. So what we have is we have a NOT gate, a NOR gate, an XOR gate, AND gate, OR gate, and a NAND gate. And these gates are the basic logic that builds up to make CPUs. So basically what the way you'd use these is you take one of these gates, you stick it on here, you would give it uh, power. So right now I'm gonna use an our Pico as a generic power supply. Take the ground, I'm not exactly sure where these are. And then you give it power. Ground. And then it's the logic signals. So for an AND gate, um, you have two inputs. And if both inputs are high, you would get a high output else you'd get a low output. And for the logic I'm going to use, it's just going to use the power rails. So if I put it into the positive, it'll act as a positive signal. Uh, and if I add negative, it would act as a negative signal. So with these logic gates, you don't need any microcontroller at all. You just need basic power uh, to act as your logic. And then we have our signal. So since I have one of these in negative and one of these positive, this would be negative because it's an AND gate. So these logic gates um, are situated so that the, the name is up. The bottom left is ground, top right is power, and to make things easier, there's two different AND gates on this one single board. And each of these uh, single AND gates, this being one, this being the other, has um, two positions to actually put the input into. So the left side here has these two signals for the for one position of the AND and two of these hands for the right side of the AND gate. And the intention of this was give you more options for inputs, but mostly to um, make it slightly more sturdy since on the back um, there's not many pins in. And on the back as well is there's the little circuit diagram of what the actual uh, logic gate is doing. So as boards go. These kind of boards are primarily designed to be, you know, fun to play with basic simple logic gates to understand the true fundamentals of how signals and the logic of things happen with without the abstraction of like a computer around it. With the second goal of just being something fun to put together since there's a lot of soldering in here. When it comes to critiquing this kind of setup, if I put this back in here, one thing I will say is that with only having one single output already, there's already a lot of uh, wires. One thing that I think that would make this semi-interesting is to reduce the wires of things that are not intended to be signals, what would be interesting is if you put headers up here, and then headers would connect to the other boards, positive and negative. So then what would happen is you would have the wires going left to right will be your signal wires and then your power and ground will be up and down. So then it goes something like this. So I think that would uh, reduce 
the um, perceived wires because right here it's hard to tell without color coding exactly where the uh, signals are actually coming from. The other thing that I thought would be really cool, having the diagram on top. Um, I don't exactly know how you'd get around this because there's not much space, especially when you look at the XOR gate. It is completely packed to the brim, which just might be a fundamental design with this if you want to be able to solder it yourself with through holes. But having, if you could have the diagram on top, then you could take examples of schematics you've seen online with logic gates and then easily try to mimic it onto this board. The other thing that might just be a small little tidbit would be um, right here, since there's four inputs, what might be nice is if the, the artwork on top clearly separated the uh, the left side or the right side of the transistor with the logic gate. So basically just have this whole thing covered in white for the right side, mostly because it's easy to screw up <laughs> uh, and having a little bit more indication of the separation between the left and the right of the input would be nice. Now, I was given this sheet with a bunch of tasks that I had to complete. So, uh, I'm gonna show you my process of that going through that. I wasn't able to finish the last one, mostly because either I screwed up or uh, something was wrong with something, but the other uh, gates I was able to do perfectly fine. All right, so now when it comes to actually assembling these devices, there's a fair bit amount of work. Um, each of them have transistors, resistors, and pins. Uh, you got to make sure you're putting the right transistors into the um, right holes. There'll be different resistors for the inputs and different resistors for the outputs. Uh, luckily, everything is uh, at least footprinted with on the uh, silk screen, so you'll be able to see the shapes and how to actually position each of the pins and yeah it, it'll, it'll take a good amount of time to actually assemble all of these just for a fun little note um, in the video you can see I'm using a soldering iron this is specifically the Pine 64 soldering iron with a little wrist uh, a little risk 5 process in there it's pretty handy. It charges with a USB-C cable. Now, I, the next thing to do after when you actually solder all of these is you want to actually test each of these little boards with the uh, expected output. Um, and you can easily do this with, say, a, like an LED. If you put both, um, if you put both positives into the AND gate, you should see the light turn on. And if you put it in any other position, it should not happen. Personally, I used a logic analyzer, uh, but I just don't have that in the video right now. Next is a half adder. A half adder basically adds two signals together. So if you have two positive, you'll get a one on the carry, and if you only have one positive, you'll have a one in the sum. And it's called a half adder because out of the two output signals, it will never produce a you'll never produce a sum of one and a carry of one. You'll need three bytes to do that. So the next thing is a flip-flop. And the cool thing about a flip-flop is both the AND gates interweave their outputs with one another so then it can actually store the state of the uh, inputs uh, it's, it, will, it can store the well, one by information and what's cool about that is this is kind of the building block for a lot of um, uh, storage uh, flash storage but though there's a lot better people who can explain this than I can <laughs> So now the next one is a 2-bit decoder. 
So you give it a binary input, and whatever the value of the input is, it will turn on that output. So if you give it a 1, it will turn off the 1 output. And if you give it a 3, it will turn on the 3 output. So you give it two, two inputs, and then it will turn on 1 based on the output, or based on the input that you give it. Um, I didn't get this to work, but uh, there could be multiple reasons for that. But in general, I had a lot of fun creating these systems, like doing out the logic. Um, it's a lot different than the kind of logic I'm used to programming. So what I'll do is I'll give you a link to the person who designed these, and hopefully he'll have updates later on the line.